Hey guys, how are you? It's Brad Sundberg in the studio with MJ uh, here in Budapest. Uh, we've got an amazing group coming tomorrow, uh, but today I get to hang out. I want to make sure I pronounce your name correctly with uh, Martin Varesh. Varesh, I, I don't want to overdo it. Uh, Martin is the, should I say, president and founder of the International Music School of Budapest. Yes, it's correct. And you're like, 14 years old. How can you be a, <laughs> how can you be like a, a CEO of something? Um, we've had some really good conversations before I got here uh, about his school. And I just want to kind of hear a little bit about your history okay. and how this whole thing came about. So you're a drummer. Yes. But tell me how you got into the music world. How did I get into the music world? Well, I always wanted to be a rock star since age three. You have the look, <laughs> and I'm Thanks. sure you have the chops. Uh, but first, uh, similar to Maddie, my parents sent me to take piano lessons because they were like, drums, no way, right. too loud. Mm -hmm. And not sophisticated enough. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's not music. Okay, so uh, I started taking piano lessons, but after a while when I got into high school, I got this urge feeling again that drums are calling me for real mm. this time. And um, during those times, my parents were letting me try. And that was pretty much the first and only thing I always wanted to do on my own. Like they didn't have to tell me to go practice. I was always in the basement doing my thing. Okay. So they started supporting it. So by the time I graduated from high school, I was already part of uh, one of the biggest bands in Hungary called Pokolgép. It was one of the first heavy metal bands. Okay. And they were kind of like my dad's age. They were much older than me. Mm -hmm. So I was the new kid on the block right. in the band. And I was with them for about four years, touring uh, Hungary and the neighboring countries, playing major festivals. So that was my first big gig. How old were you? I was 18 at that time. <laughs> 18 doing mu music festival touring. Yeah. Okay, you were exposed to the real world real fast. Yeah, it was okay. a, it, I learned a lot during those times, mm -hmm. for sure. And uh, But I wanted to experience it on a major scale because none of the bands from Hungary really play abroad that much or internationally. It's mostly just here okay. in this area. So I wanted to travel and see the world. So I got a scholarship to the Drummers Collective in New York City when I was 19. Wow. And that was the first time in the US. And after that, I got another scholarship through my college in Budapest to SUNY Purchase, upstate New York, okay. where I spent another semester. And that was the time when I started to reach out uh, for bands and apply for auditions. Okay. And uh, my first bigger American band was uh, called Armageddon, okay. which was uh, founded by the guitar player from Arch Enemy, Chris Amott. He's a Swedish hmm. guitar virtuoso. So I was playing with him for about three years again, just like with Boko Gip. And we got to go to Japan, to Mexico, travel the US several times. Wow. Uh, but uh, he decided to stop doing the band. He wanted to do something else. So I relocated myself to LA because that band was based in New York City. And I had to start everything over from scratch. Mm. So yeah, I started to work in a restaurant, started teaching drum lessons on the side and tried to build connections and uh, get myself in the industry. It took me about two years to land my biggest gig, which was called Orgy. It's a... Uh, yeah, I know it sounds funny, but they were a legendary <laughs> rock band in the early 2000s, and they are still around. Okay. Their biggest hit was Blue Monday, like an industrial metal cover sure. of uh, that 80s pop song. Yeah, and, and, I, and I worked on the on the previous one. Really? Yeah. You yeah, have? Yeah, Bruce Woodin mixed that. So Jay Gordon, is a, the singer, is a very well-known producer and engineer in the LA area. He has his own studio, and that's uh, where I met him. I worked on a different local project. And he really liked my work ethic. We were in the studio f until 4 a.m. in the morning mm. almost every day. And then I got up to go to work and after work straight to the studio wow. working on stuff. So I really liked my old school work ethic, I guess. So, so let me rewind. This is just out of curiosity. Let me yeah. rewind the train a little bit. So you, what year did you move to L.A.? 2018. 2018. Or 17. 17. It, I shouldn't ask this question. I mean, did you have, did you have any money? 
Uh, I had <clears throat> the help of my family with uh, money enough for rent for two months. That was my my limit. I need to find a job and start so you covering were, I mean, my you, expenses. You were the classic uh, hardworking musician that shows up in LA, yeah, probably in a beat up car. <laughs> not even a car. Not even. A, you have to have I a took, car in I LA. I took the bus, Orange <laughs> Line. Wow. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. You're all right now. You're in a whole different level. Yeah. So you and and you got a job at a restaurant. Yeah. Cooking, busing, everything. Okay. What I restaurant? Was ma- I was making sandwiches at an Italian deli. Okay. But I had to do everything from catching people out, taking the order, do the stuff. There were some days where there were no one besides me. It helping was just me, you. Just me. It was crazy. Wow. So at least you had food. Yeah. Yeah. You grab grab some deli food. Okay. So. What, uh, so what next? You, you were with, you were with Orgy or what? <laughs> yeah. So with Orgy, we did massive tours like Nightliner bus level, like major venue tours. Wow. And, um, then I got into other bands and I got calls. So the ball started rolling. I got myself in the industry and then all of a sudden COVID happened. Man. So <clears throat> this year, this year with massive touring was 2019. Okay. And in 20, we had COVID. So I had to pack up and move back home. I found myself on my dad's couch. Really? And, yeah. So you, went, you went from a, <clears throat> a, a, a premier tour bus yeah. to your dad's couch in, yeah. in a matter of a couple of weeks. Yes. How devastating. It was crazy. Yeah. Okay. So now, <laughs> so now you're home. It's 2020. And uh, you're putting your life back together. So what happens next? Well, I didn't really do anything for a few months because I was waiting this pandemic thing to get over within a couple of months. So I'm, I can go back and pick up where I left off. Okay. But, it, but it didn't happen. It was going on for almost two years. Right. So I couldn't just put my life on hold for two years. So I started delivering pizzas by bike. This is, that was the first thing I started doing. It was lockdown. You couldn't go anywhere. No gigs. So that was my first thing. And then I started advertising myself as a teacher. And I started giving lessons. And uh, it just started building itself up because I felt like more and more people wanted to take lessons because it was lockdown. There was nothing to do. So many people were like, okay, I always want to try drums. Maybe this is the time. Let's go. So we were wearing our masks on at the, at the studio <coughs> and I was giving lessons and it started happening. So my concept was to create an international community for musicians who live in Budapest. My clientele is 90% international people from all over the world living in Budapest. That's amazing. Thank <coughs> you. Because uh, I felt like when I went to the Drummers Collective, it was a great experience find myself in a place where I have like-minded people with similar background coming from all over the world. Right. Pursuing music. So we started to hang out together, go to gigs, practice together, inspiring each other. And I didn't really feel like we have anything like this in Hungary yet, or in Budapest at least. Okay. So I wanted to be the pioneer of that. (laughs) When I talk to young engineers in the U.S., um, there's there's a, a, a young... A young guy I've been talking to a little bit about kind of helping him get started. And I, I often recommend, I'll be like, you know what? Go to Europe. Mm-hmm. Go find a, a recording. There's some great schools here in Europe. And it, for Americans, don't travel as much as Europeans. Mm-hmm. And, um, and Europe is still kind of a big, scary, I don't mean that in a bad way, but there's just a lot of Americans have never stepped foot out of the country. And to me, what you're saying resonates so well because I think when you start opening your eyes to more of an international community, musically it's great, but also on a psychological level, I think it's really powerful. It is. And I heard some incredible stories about my students, about their background, mm-hmm. what they went through. So it's it's great. Like really step out your comfort zone and meet people because this is what life is about, I feel A- like. Absolutely. Um so what's so you've had the school now since 2020? Oh yeah, 2020, 2021 officially. Okay, and can I ask what what how many how many is it full time students or how mm-hmm. how how does it work? So it always comes and goes. The fluctuation is pretty high because some of them are just studying here and they leave after a certain amount of time. 
summertime everybody goes away on vacation so it's kind of like a dying time for okay. us now but i started doing drum camps during the summer for kids for adults separate and um I mean, yeah. you're, you're a hustler I am. <laughs> I, I, I like that. Be. I like that. Okay. So we started as a drum school since I'm a drummer. So we have drummers mostly still, about 50 drum students as of now, I would say. And we have three drum teachers besides myself. And I wanted to introduce new instruments starting from this year. Mm -hmm. So we have vocals now, bass, guitar, and piano. So I wanted to have the full palette of instruments. Beautiful. Should I ask, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Well, yeah, where do you see yourself? Are you still going to be running the school? Yeah. For sure. I want to have my own facility at some point okay. because we still rent rooms at a similar place like Orange. So we don't have our own school yet, just yet. But this is definitely the next step to have our own place. Okay. And uh, I could see maybe franchise this idea in different cities in Hungary first because there are a lot of international students in Debrecen or Seged or Pécs yeah. or maybe somewhere else in Europe, I don't know, but sky is the limit. Who, who's your favorite band right now? Oh, my favorite band. I mean, and let's say a band that has some budget. Okay. Uh, so I'm really into this new kind of wave of prog rock because I grew up listening to prog rock mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, there are a few pioneers of this new wave, one of them called Polyphia. Mm -hmm. The other one is called Unprocessed. They are from Germany. Polyphia is more instrumental, has, doesn't really have vocals, but the guitar playing is insane on both bands. Okay, so it, uh, Polyphia? Polyphia. Polyphia. So if, if Polyphia called you tomorrow... Oh, well, great question. <laughs> I see what's coming. <laughs> said, yeah. You know, we've got an opening and we've heard good stuff about you. Um, it's not a fair question, but I'm just curious. Where, where's your heart right now? Well, I miss playing music for Do sure. You? Yeah, okay. I miss being on stage because now I'm full-time coach, mm -hmm. Coach Martin, <laughs> lately. Um, not a fair question. but Yeah, but I, I, I will, I, but if it's music which I really enjoy, I will probably say yes and see where it goes. Yeah. But uh, honestly, if I want to be very honest, I would look for like a loft project around here okay. and just play great shows like a few times. I don't really see myself being on the road like eight to 10 months a right. year anymore. Right. Like I did it before, it was great, but now I, I'm ready to settle down more. Okay. Two great chats. And I, I love that both of you guys are, are your hustlers. I mean, you, you yeah. created something <laughs> that I didn't even, I had no idea you had 63 rooms. And uh, you started an international music school, band camp. You, I, I'm, I, it's an absolute honor to thank chat you. with both of you. Thank you so, so much for having us. Thank you for uh, thank you for hanging out with me, and uh, hope you can pop in here a little bit over the weekend. Yeah, I will try my best awesome. for sure. All right, guys, I, I'm I'm very blessed. I get to uh, meet really cool people, and today was uh, an absolute highlight. So stay safe, and I will see you soon in the studio. Take care.